second thing I want to thank every one of you here, very specially, every one of you to make it successful, although we are not many. And also I want to thank Stephen Gill for introducing me to this peace conference. A very special friend of mine, a dear friend and a, and a close companion. I've been, I, I've been working with him the last two years. We became very close to each other. Our relationship is very good. When you talk about peace, it's a divine thing. It's an intangible asset. It's a very abstract thing, but yet it's so powerful. Peace is a very powerful thing. I just give you one illustration. First of all, I don't want to talk on a global aspect of it. I want to talk on an individual aspect of it. It's very important to understand when individual then comes the family, then comes the nation, then comes it. Individually, we are not peace with one another or peace with ourselves. We cannot establish peace. We can talk, go around talking about peace around the world and talking about it everywhere, but individually, we don't have peace in ourselves. Uh, uh, we cannot establish peace at, so with one another. First of all, uh, many years ago, sheep travel, sheep travel was very prevalent because there was planes were too expensive to travel. Two families in England, staying neighbors side by side, uh, for 30 over years, side by side neighbors, they were traveling in a ship. As the ship anchored in the dock, and they, would they wanted to go out and see what's, uh, what's the port like and how the city like, and they told the chief seaman that in those days they have to share cabins, you know. Mm -hmm. And they t turn around and tell the chief steward, I have some valuables. I want to give it to and trust to you so that you can give me because I don't trust my neighbor. <laughs> and then, and then after that, the chief steward looked at him and surprised, you know, you know something? They told you the same thing about you also. <laughs> See, we can be living side by side mm -hmm. and tolerance for the, you know, I don't like the word tolerance. Tolerance is used in engineering. If you have engineers mm. know what is the tolerance level. But in human relationship, there is no tolerance. See, you can tolerate so to certain extent after that. But accepting one as we are, that's very important. When you establish peace, one of the greatest things you can establish peace is accepting one as I accept John as yeah. Oh, he had me weakness, whatever he has. I accept our dear brother here yeah, as he is. I don't want to be, like, you see, peace cannot be established when you don't accept one another. Mm -hmm, yeah. Very important fact. And, and different culture. You know, I grew up in, a, in a Singapore. I was born in Singapore, an American citizen, and now I'm here to teach and all that. Uh, I, I grew up with uh, three, four communities. Uh, two, of them, uh, two of them are ethnic groups that came from India and China. And then we have the Malays, the natives, and this thing. I grew up in the community and, and uh, what I was taught is that the Chinese, the main diet is pork, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Indians, the main diet is goat and lamb and all that and, and others and all that. So what we do, as long as they get the order, it says, it smells like pig. <laughs> and then the, the Chinese and Indians, this is indoctrinated in me, in a subconscious mind. So I grew up with a prejudice, one another. But I grew up in a every time I see that sweat, and then somebody turned around and told me that if you go, uh, does you go to your, uh, you, know, you take your sweat and smell it, does it smell sand like cologne? No, of course not. <laughs> so we all have certain orders. But accepting one another as our weaknesses, I mean, just giving an example, accepting one another is a very important factor to establish peace with one another. We cannot establish one another without that. That's a very important factor that we have to have, despite of your religion, despite of your color of your skin, despite of your dressing, despite of your tradition, despite of this thing. We, as when we learn to accept one another, that starts in India. First of all, it starts with one another. And I, I should say the individual. Second thing, I must have a peace with myself. See, we grow up with many, many prejudices. Sadhu Sindh Singh one time told that if you take a white flower, eh, white flower, and wear a sunshade, and look at the flower, what is the color of the flower? What is the color of the flower? The color of the flower is according to the sunshade, right? Mm -hmm. That's prejudice. Mm -hmm. We grow. When a person has prejudice, he cannot have peace. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You cannot have peace. If you take out the sunglasses, then you can see the white flower exactly. A diamond is the same thing. And when you take a diamond and look at 
And the diamond, one part of the diamond is only one color, but when you look at the right parlor, it produces seven beautiful colors. Beautiful. Diamond become very beautified after looking at the seven colors. That's exactly the world is. We have to know this. There's so many nations are here. So many nations are here. Every nation is different. Every nation is unique. Diversity is beautiful. The color, that skin, black, white, red, yellow, all of the diversity, nations are here. Each time I look at it, this is human creation, God's creation. We all are God's creation. So we learn to accept one another. When we learn to accept one another, the, uh, we accommodate one another. Of course, we may, I may disagree with some of the things that you say. You may disagree, with it, but we agree to disagree. Then we can peacefully with one another. It is a very important fact that when we, when we learn to live with one another with peacefully, agreeing to disagree. Because you know, we, have, we grow up differently. We visualize things differently. We, uh, our cultures are different, differently, of course, uh, you know, differently. You know, the, the heating habits are differently. All of them are different, but yet we must come together in the uniform. Every one of us is very unique in it. The unique makes it beautiful. The only way by accepting each other, then we can peace with one another. Whatever they are. I'm not talking about sociopath and psychopath here, please. <laughs> I'm not talking about sociopath and psychopath. I'm not talking about criminal and accepting a criminal and all. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about evil. I'm talking about an individual, as an individual who comes to you daily with me. You know, I've been neuroscience and I've did uh, uh, criminal psychology. One of the things is that the brain has certain, when you're happy, you have set, send out certain waves. When you're sad, it sends out certain waves. When you're angry and bitter and hatred, it sends out certain waves. You can see a person comes into the room, the karma, is, the waves that send out to the room huh, is, to com is completely different. And you can see a happy person comes into the room, you see, you electrify the whole place. Mm -hmm. You see, he brings peace. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest men that I begin, one of the greatest men that I begin to, Love and like is Mahatma Gandhi. You know, Mahatma Gandhi never hated the British. He did not like the ideology of the British, but he never hated the British. Mm -hmm. But he, he is a man who's responsible peace himself. Mm -hmm. How did he get the peace? He began to read one day, he was going on, his, on the shores of, on the, on the streets of South Africa. And his friend Stanley Joan, I think Stanley Joan, I'm not sure which is a preacher, began to open up Matthew chapter five and six and seven. I told him that. And he began to read, this is something different that I've never read before. You know? And I said, this is wonderful. And he went there, took that theory, went into India, and turned the nation upside down, that we should not have any more weapons to fight. Yeah? We're not going to fight with weapons. We're going to fight with peace. Hmm. We are not going to hate anyone. We're not hating the British, but we're hating the system they have. And another thing I like about that, the last one I'm going to say, economic rights. One of the things, key examples that I want to make is Mahatma Gandhi. The British looked at the India, and it's a fact. The British looked at India, it's a fact. They took the cotton from India, they went to England, they make the cotton, they sell to this thing. Mahatma Gandhi says, economic, the, if the, a man, is a, his job is affected. If a job is affected, his uh, career is affected, his uh, mm -hmm. stomach is affected, he's not going to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be peaceful when I'm hungry, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very important fact. The bottom line is why wars are going around the world, around the world, economic, one claim, land is claiming each other, you know? Because of the economic rights they have mm -hmm. to, 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 to self-depend on, on themselves and to work and to produce a, a, a better society, a better this thing. And Gandhi told them, do not wear their clothing, no more buy. Cripple, cripple the economy because it makes the Indian pay for them. Mm -hmm. And all more Indians were poor at that time. So we want to know, understand that when one group of people is multi-rich, another group of people is very poor, we're going to not have peace. Mm -hmm. So politician asks me, I'm not a politician, I'm a more preacher than a politician. As for me, I feel that that every child, every child should not be deprived of any kind of education, any kind of opportunity in this country, every part of the world, every child. And when that opportunity is given, that child will shine. And eh? that child will shine. Because we never know intelligence. Intelligence is not based on one, one 
Mm-hmm. You go to university, you graduate, and you be, that's the more intelligence. Different, different intelligence we have. All kind of intelligence we have. And we allow our children, our children, every, every man and woman, that allow them to have opportunity for them to strive in there. Then we can attain peace. You see, when, I'm, when I have everything, I will be peaceful. Mm-hmm. When I deprive of things, the government is corrupted, deprived of things, then I don't have anything. Right. And I'm going to go on riot on the streets. In 1965, we had a big riot. Why? Because the Malays are the natives of the land, and it's Singapore, I'm talking about Singapore. Malays are the natives of the land, and the Chinese are also the immigrants of the land. But they are richer than this thing. So that disparity takes place. So policies have to make so, so, such, a, such a way that both of them enjoy the economic rights. So riots started to take place. So Prime Minister, Prime Minister's wise man, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, very wise in his ways, he makes sure that this never happens and makes sure that every economic rights have been established to all of them, given all our equal opportunity, so they can prosperity they have, what the government will give them. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank you very simply. I wanted to make one statement that Jesus made. And he loved the earth. He says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the was one. There's two kinds of peace. A pseudo peace and a real peace. Pseudo peace is, means it's you look at everything that you have. Like for example, you have a car, you have a house, you have a million dollars, you are peaceful. When you take that away, you lose your peace. Mm. You know? But that divine peace, when we believe there's the all, Almighty there, when we learn to embrace the Almighty, we have a personal peace in our lives. And that peace, when we go, I, I believe one thing, one thing I know that I, I have studied people, I've studied great men, when they walk past, when they are peaceful, men who generate peace, I'm, everywhere they walk past, they have, they have generate peace around them. Peace is infectious. Peace is not, infectious, just like a flu, you get it, everybody get it. Peace is infectious. It's thick. We have to work for it. it we are, I'm not born with peace. Maybe uh, my parents have taught me peace, but yet still in me there's weakness in it. But I have to work for peace. I have to work away. Like this conference like this. I thank, I thank uh, Dr. Monica for this conference like this to make people aware what is peace all about. And uh, the more we are aware of what peace is all about, then we understand ourselves. Number one, we understand ourselves. Number two, we understand each other. Our humanity around us, our neighbors, our friends, and our, our, even our people we don't like them, we understand. We understand. Third thing, we understand the nation. They say peace must start at home. Charity starts at home. Peace must start at home. And very important, if I'm peace with myself, as John says, I see peace. With, first of all, I need to be peace with myself. If I'm peace with myself, then I can peace with every one of you. When I am walking with hatred. Malice, jealousy, eh? indifferent. People can see, automatically people can see, all that can see. We can bring ethnic problems here, right, into our country and cause the problem. You know, two Jewish groups, I said to say, two Jewish groups, segment one and segment two, they are acidic, acidic Jewish, you know. Mm-hmm. They have ethnic problems, they bring them to Montreal. They cannot see each other face to face. Two acidic Jewish groups. We, 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 we think that they are so so come, uh, so united. They bring the ethnic problem because they come from one father, two different brothers. We are two different ideology. Put all our ideology, put all our religious practices, put all of that. Understand each other because you are a creation of God. I am a creation of God. When I understand the creation of God, oh God, you, uh, God, the Bible says, uh, I'm creating the image of God. And you are a creation of God. When I begin to understand that you are a human being created by God, I will never harm you. And that's where I generate peace. And people understand. With this thought, I'd like to thank. Thank you.